guys and welcome back to my channel. This is Erica. Today we have a really fun sewing tutorial. I am going to show you how to make this fabric and rope bowl. It's really easy and the supplies are super simple. So let's go ahead and get started. So supplies for this product are super simple. You're just going to need some pins and a couple of wonder clips are handy. Um, you will need some cotton filler cord. And I just use this 3 8 inch polyester filler cord. Um, you can use whatever size you want. I just wanted to make a little bit of a chunkier basket. You'll also need some kind of fabric roll or you can cut your own strips. I am going to be using this Bonnie and Camille. This is what's called a Moda Honey Bun. It's a one and a half inch strip by width of fabric. And as you can see, those are kind of my color combinations. This one is from their Smitten line. Like I said, you can use a honey bun. You could also use a jelly roll. You could also just cut your own strips from whatever scraps you have as well. That will work just fine. Um, I also find a pair of nice scissors handy, and then you're gonna need a sewing machine that can do a zigzag stitch. And that's pretty much it for this project. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start with one of our ends of rope, and then we're gonna go ahead and take apart our roll. And of course, you can do this in any order that you like. I'm gonna just keep them in the order that they came in. So here are all of my strips. I'm not gonna sew them together or anything. I'm not even gonna bother cutting off the salvage edges. We're just going to take our first strip All right, so I'm just gonna take one of my strips and just lay my cotton cording on here about halfway, as you can see, so that I can fold it over. And we're just doing that so we don't have a raw edge here, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and just fold this end in. And if you'd like, you can put a pin there to hold it. For now, I'm gonna try and just kind of hold it with my fingers. And then we're gonna start wrapping this strip around, and it's gonna fold a little bit at first. You want each layer to overlap the previous one by just a little bit. Now that I have one on here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a wonder clip on the end there just to kind of help me hold it in place. And then I'm just gonna keep wrapping the cord, the fabric around the cord. And as you can see, I'm just kind of overlapping, but basically I'm wrapping so that um, you don't see any of my cord showing through my fabric here. And I'm just gonna wrap as much as I feel comfortable with. If every so often you wanna throw a wonder clip on there, that can be kind of helpful so it doesn't come unwrapped. And you can just keep wrapping. I'm gonna go ahead and finish wrapping this entire strip and then I'll show you how we'll get the center started. And I have found that it's easiest to kind of wrap like one strip at a time. You could wrap a bunch of it if you want. Um, you could even make it look a little bit more artistic and wrap a few sections and then leave a few sections um, natural. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of my strip here and I'm gonna go ahead um, like I said, I didn't cut off the salvage edges or anything. I'll just cover that up with my next strip. You could cut them off if you want, I suppose. I'm going to go ahead and put a wonder clip there just to hold that in place. Then we can get started sewing our center. So I'm going to go ahead and take this wonder clip off. And you're just going to want to kind of fold it into a circle. If you want kind of a more oval basket, you could do an oval. And I'm just gonna do a couple of rows here, like about that far, because we are going to uh, just secure the center of the basket. So I'm gonna take a pin and just stick it in like that way. I'm gonna take another one in and stick it in this way. And probably we'll do one more over here on this side. Okay, so that's gonna kinda of hold our center in place for us. And then what we're gonna do is take this over to our sewing machine and I'm actually gonna sew across this way and across this way just to um, kind of secure the middle of our bowl here and then we'll go ahead and start sewing. It can be really difficult to try and sew in a little teeny tiny circle like this. You can do that. I've just found it gives the center of your bowl just a little bit more stability to do the crisscross. So that's how I'm gonna do it. All right, so I have put my little spiral here into my machine and 
Quickly, I forgot to mention in the supplies, but it is listed below. Um, I did switch out to a jeans and denim needle. I feel like this really helps when you're doing a really thick project like this, so I definitely suggest that. It helps with breakage, and these are a little bit better at getting through some of these thicker fabrics. So like I mentioned, I'm just gonna sew across here and across here in a uh, kind of a cross shape to just kind of give our center a little more stability. For this portion, I am gonna just use a straight stitch, not the zigzag stitch. And we might just kind of have to help it. I am gonna move one of these needles out. Now that I have it over here. Okay, and then cut that thread. Okay, and then we're gonna go across the other way. Okay. All right, now that our center is kind of secure, I'm gonna go ahead and change over to my zigzag stitch. On my machine, that is stitch number three, and then I changed the width to 5.0, and the um, length to 2.0. So you can kind of decide, you know, run a little sample fabric through and see what looks best for whatever size cording that you are using. Um, I think that's gonna work well for me. So let's go ahead and get started. Now on my presser foot here, there's a little arrow here, which is probably difficult for you guys to see, but I'm gonna put that arrow in the center of my where my two pieces are joining. That way my zigzag will hopefully go about an equal distance on either side of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put one down just to make sure I'm good. And then we're gonna just go nice and slow. And then as you can see, I'm just slowly twisting my circle here. As we go around this process, this is not a super fast project, um, simply because your machine needs you to go a little bit slower with it. But just try and make sure you're getting both layers every time you're running a stitch. Now, as you can see, I came clear to the end of my strip here. So all I'm gonna do, and I wasn't watching, so I would have probably given myself just a little bit more space, but all I'm gonna do is just cover that up with this one. Make sure you can't see that. And even if you can see a little bit of the white, honestly, with the this project, you're not gonna notice it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add on my next strip, just like I did the first strip. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish adding this strip and then I will show you what to do when my base is as wide as I want it and I'm ready to start coming up the sides. And I'll just fast uh, motion this part for you guys so that you don't have to sit here and watch me hand roll this because it is a little bit time consuming, but totally worth it in the end. I think we're about the size that I want the bottom of my bowl. Now, of course, you can make your bowl any size you want. Mine, after measuring Jack's, is about eight inches in diameter. But like I said, you can do anything that you want. Now, I have cut my thread. I just did a little back stitch here so it won't come unraveled. And um, my machine did sk skip some stitches here and there, and that's totally fine. In the end, you won't really notice it. If you have any areas where there are larger places that it skipped, now is the time to just go back and kind of fix those. Just run back over them and just go really slow. The trick to this project is to go slow. You can also come back to this center now that we have kind of a more stable base here. And if you'd like 
run a couple of stitches around this center as well just to give it a little bit more stability. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you how we are going to start going um, up the sides so that our bowl starts taking shape. All right, so I've gone ahead and fixed up anywhere that I felt like needed a little extra stitching. And then I stopped kind of here, so I just went back about a half an inch. I'm going to um, overlap my stitches and we're gonna get started again and then we'll start forming the sides. All right, when you're ready to start forming the sides, you're just gonna tip the bottom up a little bit here. And what'll start happening is it will start setting this next row kind of on top of this row instead of flat next to it. It won't be visible for a few rounds, um, but once you get a few done, then you'll start seeing the sides of the bowl um, stitch up. So we're gonna go ahead and continue adding strips just like we've been doing, um, only this time we're gonna go ahead and hold our bowl up. where I need to add a new rope and so what I've done is just cut my rope at an angle on um, both of the ends and then I'm going to kind of splice them together and just kind of hang on to them and then I'm going to go ahead and just continue wrapping my strip hopefully your strip and your splice don't happen at the same time your strip end and your splice end. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick a wonder clip right there just so that I can kind of know that that's my end and I need to hang on to it. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and continue sewing just like I have been. I'm just gonna hang on to that splice until we get through it. Now I also have a new color starting. So this one is a little crazy, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that on. Just a few wraps just so I can kind of get through that splice. And then I'll come back and finish wrapping that bit. Okay guys, we have come to the end of our rope, literally, and so I just have a few inches left on my fabric as well. We're just gonna cut our rope on a diagonal again, like before, without cutting our fabric. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just keep wrapping my fabric like normal here until I get to the end. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just Clip it down here on the end and then we'll just taper it off into the edge of our bowl as we sew along. All right, so I have, I'm at my end here and I've got my edge wrapped all the way around. I'm just gonna kind of fold up this end piece just slightly and then fold this over just so that we don't have a raw edge there. And then we'll just continue sewing and I'll backstitch at the end. All 
right guys, as you can see, this project was super fun and easy to make. You can also, of course, make it in any size you want. I used two packages of the roping and about, I think, 18 or 19 strips of fabric. I lost count in there somewhere, but you can make it any size you like. I also made mine a little bit steeper on the sides here, as you can see, but you can also make the um, uh, bowl a little bit more gradual. It just depends on how much you tilt the base as you're adding the sides. So the less that you tilt the base up, of course, the more gradual you your sides will um, go up. The more dramatic that you um, tilt it up, or the higher you tilt it up, the steeper your sides will be. So this project is super customizable. You can make it any size or shape that you like using this method. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making fun tutorials for you. Thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you next time. This bag, or this bag, oh my gosh. Oh my <laughs> gosh, shoot me right now. <laughs> Okay. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making fun tutorials like you, like this. <laughs> I'm trying to hurry because my battery's dying too. Shh. Get in there. Hey. Jax. Jaxie.